Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to your session. I don't know, I think session 33 or so. Today we continue with the revision of the content. So we are going to look at assignment four questions, which was based on study unit eight and study unit nine. So starting with study unit eight. Study unit eight was confidence intervals. So when we look at the confidence interval, just to recap, there are two things you need to remember with confidence interval. We can calculate confidence interval for the mean or for the proportion. Calculating a confidence interval for the mean, there are a couple of properties that you need to also remember. We need to remember if population standard deviation is known, what we need to do. And when it is unknown, what do we need to do? What we need to do. So, what we know as well, regardless of whether we do the confidence interval for the proportion or for the mean, we know that generally the confidence interval formula is given by the point estimate, which is can either be for the mean, sample mean, or, uh, or sample proportion plus or minus the critical value times the standard error. That, we need to always remember that that is the formula for calculating the confidence interval. But we also need to remember that only these two parts weird happened when I was clicking, clicking. Okay, anyway. So, what we need to remember that the following, which now when I click, it does whatever it does. Okay, let's not let the, uh, what do you call the, let's not let the, technology determine what we need to be doing. Oh, come on. Serious. I've messed up the power of the PDF. Just wanted to draw a line. It allows me to use the thing. Okay. So, before the technology disrupted us, so we know this is the formula to calculate. The problem is I cannot write on, on the PDF. Can I just, can I just give me a sec? I want to close it and open it again because now I cannot write, okay, now I can write. Okay. 
Okay, so we happy. So we know we're doing confidence interval, and for confidence interval, we have for the mean and we have the proportion. And we said for the mean, we always need to remember that when that population standard deviation, if it's known what we need to do, and population standard deviation, if it is unknown, what we need to do. And I just explained that in terms of the confidence interval, the formula is point estimate plus or minus the critical critical value times the standard error. And that is the formula for calculating the confidence interval. However, we also need to remember that the critical value times the standard error will give you what we call the margin of error or error of margin error of margin or margin of error. So the critical value times the standard deviation refers to the margin of error. Point estimate plus or minus the margin of error will give you the confidence interval. And with confidence interval, it has the lower boundary, which will be the minus gives you the lower boundary and the plus gives you the upper boundary. So you also need to remember how you find the boundaries. So when we calculate confidence interval for the mean, when the population standard deviation is known or given, then we use our point estimate, which will be our mean plus or minus for the lower boundary, upper boundary, times the critical value. And since we, the population standard deviation is known, the critical value we're going to find using alpha divided by two, and the, sta the standard error, and our standard error will be the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And that is your confidence interval for the mean when the population standard deviation is known. Critical value, we know that we're going to find it on the Z table. That is the way we're going to find the critical value. We need to divide alpha by Z over 2. To find the confidence interval for when the population standard deviation is unknown, we use the point estimate plus or minus for the boundary. The critical value will be T alpha divided by 2 and the degrees of freedom times the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And that will give you the confidence interval for when the population standard deviation is unknown, for the mean when the population standard deviation is unknown. Now, Finding the critical value, we're going to use the T table. And on the T table, our degrees of freedom is N minus one. So it means the sample size minus one. And then we go find the critical value. For the proportion, we use P, which is the point estimate for the proportion portion plus or minus the critical value z alpha divided by 2 for z for the proportion we always use z times the standard error which is the square root of your sample proportion 1 minus the pop, the sample proportion divided by n and that will give you the confidence interval and we use the z table However, if our sample proportion is not given, therefore it means they would give you the observation satisfying that and you divide by n. 
to go find the sample proportion. Now, sometimes you also need to be able to find your value of your alpha by using your confidence level. Your confidence level, which is one minus alpha. In order to find alpha, we need to use the confidence level. And you will need to know that for a 95%, the confidence level, 95% confidence level is 0 0.95 confidence level, which is your alpha of 0 0.05, because it's one minus 0 0.95, which will give you 0 0.05. You also need to know what your 99% confidence level is, which is 0 0.99, which uh, our alpha will be, sorry, our alpha here is 0 0.01. That is our alpha. And you need to know how to take your alpha value, divide by two, and go find the critical value. So this is just to find the alpha, which is 1 minus 0 0.95 will give you alpha of 0 0.05. 1 minus 0 0.99 will give you your alpha value of 0 0.01 and other, um, other confidence level like 80%, 90%, and so forth. You need to know how to use them. Okay, based on that information that I just shared, let's then look at the questions. What else am I missing? So you also need to know what else. Nothing. Uh, I think we've covered more or less, but also some of the things that you need to also remember is if we increase the value of our standard error, uh, what will happen to the, the um, what happens to the confidence interval? Does it increase or does it become smaller? So remember that. Remember that if we increase the level of significance, uh, where is your upper for this one? And sorry, lower boundary and upper boundary for that one. And if we do this one, what is your lower and your upper based on your level of confidence. If it's level of confidence, how does it affect? Um, is it does it mean the lower confidence level is bigger than the smaller confidence interval? Or when your confidence level is bigger, the bigger the your confidence level will be. So you just need to also remember all those things that we did. Okay, so now first question they are asking. A random sample size of 100 in a sample mean of 100. The population standard deviation no, is known to be 15. What is the margin of error of estimating a 99% confidence interval? The first question that you need to ask yourself is, am I doing confidence interval for the mean? Or the proportion we're doing for the mean because they gave you the mean and the standard deviation so it means we're doing the confidence interval for the mean if you're doing the confidence interval for the mean the next question is is the population standard deviation known or unknown they told you the population standard deviation is known or they even gave it to you so Sometimes they will not say is known, but they will just say population standard deviation is, and you know that is known. So the population standard deviation is known, so it means we're using Z. And the question is asking us to calculate the margin of error. Therefore, remember the margin of error is your critical value times your standard error. So it means we just need to calculate Z alpha divided by 2 and standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So what we need to be calculating is z alpha divide, why am I giving you the answers? I don't want to get to the answer before we calculate. Divide by 
population standard deviation divide by the square root of n. So the first thing you need to do is go find your z alpha divided by 2. How do we go find z alpha divided by 2? z alpha divided by 2, we need to go first find alpha. We know that this is 99%. So a 99% confidence level is 0 0.99, which then it is alpha of 1 minus 0 0.99 which is equals to 0, 0,01. So then you just substitute Z of 0, 0,01 divided by 2. That is Z of 0, 0,1 divided by 2 is 0, 0,05. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, It's 0, 0,005. Then it means we need to go and find this on the table. Go to the Z table. Eliminative standardized Z table. And we're looking for 0, 0,005. At the moment, 0, 0,004. 0, 0,0 0, 0,5 it should be that one so it is 2 and that 2,58 so our critical value is 2,58 So we just substitute two. So what we're calculating is two comma five eight times our standard deviation is fifteen, and our n. That's our n. It's hundred. Calculate and what is the answer? Three comma eight seven. Three comma eight seven, which is E. There were two there are two correct answers. I've got a query regarding this first question. Since we were given two same answers, but when we chose one, they gave us wrong. So I, I have a query regarding this. I think they need to do a remark on this question. Uh. I guess probably you will get a four mark. Everybody will get a four mark for this question. They give us zero. <laughs> no, when they recalculate. Remember when you look at the score. So there is two different things that you will see your your answers or your what do you call that? Your results. You will see your score, which will give you how much mark was this? Two points. You will see on on your assignment, on the online assignment, you will see this two points or zero. Ne? But when you go to the grade book, because grade book is 100%, you will see your percentage. And for questions like this, for part one, they would have given you four marks, whether you got it right or wrong, because of the errors that, are, that exist on those questions. So your grade mark will be higher than your. Uh, than your your question, like your your assignment score, because this is the score points that you will receive. You will see on the side, but when you go to the grade point, it will be different. All right. 
but the answer is three comma eight seven. The estimate below are ninety five percent confidence estimate interval estimates for the population mean calculated using the sample size of 20, 40, and 60. Which estimate must have been calculated using the sample size of 20? That was a very tricky question. What are they asking you to calculate? Confidence interval for the mean norm. Yeah, but they say which estimate must have been calculated using the sample size of 20. So the challenge with this, unless maybe, I don't know if this was a full question as asked like this, or there was additional information somewhere here given. Uh, or if it relates to the part that we calculated uh, above where we were given the 100 sample, sample mean and the standard deviation of 15. Mm. Okay, so let's, let's assume we're using that one where we were given, oh, sorry, the sample mean the sample mean of 100 and what else were we given? The standard deviation of 15, which is the previous question that I am looking at. Uh, <clears throat> so if now we need to calculate a 95% confidence interval, so we need our 0.95 which means our alpha will be 1 minus 0, 1 minus 0, 0,05. So our alpha will be 0, 0,05. 0, 0,05. And if our alpha is 0, 0,05, therefore our z alpha divided by 2 is 1,96. We know that because 0, 0,05 divided by Two zero comma zero five divided by two gives us zero comma zero two five zero, which then it's one comma nine six. So if our z value is one comma nine six, so I'm going to calculate our mean plus or minus our critical value, which is Z alpha divided by two times the standard error, which is the standard deviation divided by the square root of N. Our mean is 100 plus or minus our critical value, which is 1,96 times our standard deviation is 15 Divide by, now they say we must use the sample of 20. Divide by the square root of 20. Calculate that. So then it means you are going to split this into two. At the end, let's see. Uh, 
Lizzie, can you, is there only three answers to this question? Yes, there are only three answers to this question. It is 100 minus what oh sorry that's one comma nine six one comma nine six times fifteen divided by the square root of twenty. And that does not even give me, it gives me 93 on the minus, 93 comma 42. What do you get? Yeah, I did same. And then on the upper one, it's 106.57. And then on the other side, it's 106. <clears throat> Okay, um, let, let, let me do that. One more. One oh six point five seven. Okay, change your size sample size from twenty to forty. Because I don't know what they they are trying to achieve with this question. So if I change the sample size from 20 to 40 on the minus side, I get 95. Let me put it there. I get 95.35. And on the positive side, I get 104. Point six five, and then if I change it to sixty, if you change it to sixty, the, the upper one would be one hundred three point seven nine. It becomes 103. It's the upper, not the lower. Oh, the upper one. And the lower, the lower would be 96.2. 96.2 and 103 point, I'm going to keep it to 8. Okay, so if we have multiple values here, I'm not sure. So if, if, I'm, I'm assuming if we use the 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 hundred one and then and, and here we we I'm I'm going to assume that they are asking you to check whether what um if you have a sample size of 20, 40, or 60, whether your confidence interval are going to be bigger or smaller, or and that is why I did it this way as well. So when it is 20, we know that it is one of, it's 93 and 101. When it is 40, is 95 and 104, which is bigger. And then when it is 60, it's 96 and 103. Lizzie? Yes. Yes, I I remember this question from from the assignment. I also struggled, but what I when I when I read the to the question, what what immediately came to mind is remember the there's something you told us about the rule when it's when it's smaller it's wider and when it's bigger it's narrower. Yes, that is what I applied to this question, and then I got this one right by applying that that method. 
Yes, that's what I was trying to do with this as well to say when it's big. Uh, but yeah, because we're talking about the sample size. So let's let's look at this one. So for a 20 is if I had to draw this on a number line like that. So 20 is 93 and 101. Ne? That is 20. So this is 20. 40 is 95 and 104. That is, that is 40. And then 60, 60, we got 96, which starts somewhere here, and 103. Why 60 gets less than 40? Something's not right. Are we sure for 40 we got 104? On the plus side, yes, it was 104. Hmm. It's very weird. Okay, so if I look at these values, then 20 should be less. Which 78 is less. Oh, sorry, this should be 106. Yes, sorry. My bad. This should be 106. For 20 should be 106, not 101. It's 106. So 20 should be wider. So it should be less and wider. So 20 will be bigger. And 40 will be 95. And one of four, and then sixty will be that is sixty. So if we look at all all of them, so therefore it means the correct answer should be C because we're looking at twenty and twenty is wider. Right? 20 is bigger, then 40 will be in the middle, and then 60 will be there. So that will be the wider one because 78, 78 and 121 will be bigger. 84 will be in between, and 112 will be there. So therefore, this bigger one, the outer one, would have been the 20. This one is the 40, and this one is 60. So this is 60, 40, and 20. So the answer is C. So you just need to know the rule on how to apply it, because on this one, since they didn't give you additional information how would you know is just make up some dummy values because i i realized that they use the hundreds and that's why i used the hundred uh, and the standard deviation of 15 but they could have used any other value that's why it's not going to match 100 percent but at least it gives it gives us an idea in terms of when the sample when the sample size is smaller the confidence interval is bigger. So when n is smaller, so that you need to remember, when n is smaller, the confidence interval becomes bigger. When n is big, and then the opposite, when n is big, which is 60, the confidence interval will be smaller. 
So that is what you need to remember. So any small, the confidence interval is big. N is big, the confidence interval is smaller. Answer is C. The Department of Basic Education alias finding from a survey of 150 learners suggests an average travel time of 114 minutes from home at one of the schools. Assume the population standard deviation of learners travel is 72. Construct a 95% confidence. <laughs> estimate of the population so we are told what n is we need to buy that mat for here so that we can sit here on the floor ne? and play games and our mean we also need to buy that thing that's one of them is the price home so that we can put it there and we're going to sit and <clears throat> And the sample mean is 114. And what else are we given? Assume that the population standard deviation, so we are given the population standard deviation of 72. So it is known. It's very important to identify that. Construct a 95% confidence interval. So it means we know that we need Z alpha divided by 2. What is Z of 95%? This one you should know it by heart. 1.96. This one you don't even have to go and look it up. You should know it. Okay, so calculate or find your confidence interval estimate. Plus or minus Z alpha divided by 2. And this square root of n. <clears throat> I will check your answers on the chat to see how much did you get. I don't have access to the chat, but my answer is B. Okay. Let, how did you substitute? What is your X bar? It's 114. One, one, plus or minus your critical value of 1,96 now. The population standard deviation. 72. Divide by the square root of 150. And on the minus side. Minus side 102,48. If we didn't round it off, we can round it off from there. It was 7776 seven, and on the Plus side, what do you get? One two five comma five two two. Which will be if we run it off to two decimal B.
a household survey based on a sample of 50 households in a rural area or rural village found the average household income to be 3.5 with a standard deviation of 8,000, construct a 99%. Have they given new population standard deviation? Yes. How do you know that they gave you the population standard deviation? They say from a sample of 50 households, they found the mean to be 3,500, the standard deviation to be 1,000. Have they given you the population standard deviation? The answer should just be no. Because they didn't give you the population standard deviation, they gave you the standard deviation from the sample. Because they say from a sample of 50, they found the mean to be 3.5, which is your X bar of 3.5. Zero and the standard deviation, which is S of a thousand. So the population standard deviation here is unknown. Sigma is unknown. You need to be able to read the question to make sense of it. Whether is this a population or a sample standard deviation? Construct a 99% confidence interval. So we know that our N is 50 and our alpha will be 0, 0,01. So we need to go find the critical value from the T distribution table, which is T alpha divided by two and the degrees of freedom. And we know that the degrees of freedom is N minus one, which is 50 minus one, which is equals to 49. So here we'll have T of 0, 0,0 1 divided by 2 and 49. We need to go to the T table to go 5. T of 0, 0, 0,005 and 49. Go into the T table. Looking for 0, 0,005 is the last column. T of 49. Degrees of freedom of Our mean is 3,500 plus or minus our critical value 2,680. That's what we got. Times standard deviation of 1,000 divided by the square root of n. For the minus, it's three one two zero comma nine nine zero seven. Three one two zero comma nine nine zero seven. Zero seven six five and some numbers. And from the plus side? 3879. 0.009923. Looking at the answer plus other numbers. So don't forget those other numbers there. Let's see, 3120.99. And three, if we round it off, three, seven, nine. 
we round it off, this will be one. So three, eight, seven, nine, comma, zero, one, which is option number one. Consider a T distribution with a degrees of freedom of 27. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? So the degrees of freedom is 27. Just wanna go slow so that I don't give you the answers. Okay, so. What do we need to do now? They say A says, so we need to find which statement is incorrect. So we know what the degrees of freedom is. Number A, the T value associated with the lower tail probability of 0, 0,01 is that. B, 95% confidence Oh, the 95% of the area under the T distribution falls between that and that. The value T, the, the T value associated with the lower tail probability of 0, 0.025 will be that. A 90% of the area under the curve falls between that and that. A 80% falls between that and that because these are just critical values, all of them. Whether they chose whichever one is the critical values. So let's see which one is the incorrect one. We know what the degrees of freedom is. Let's go find our T of 0, 0,01 and 27. T of 0, 0,01, which is that column. So we can come to this one, which is the second column, and 27. Because that is our degrees of freedom. We find that it is 2,473. Let's go to our question. It says the lower tail, where is the lower tail? The lower tail will be this side for the critical value. So this side we know it is a minus. So it will be 2,473. On their side, it would have been positive if it was in the upper side. So that is one. That is what we wanted. That is that. Which in turn it says a 99% confidence interval. On the lower side, it would be minus 2.3. That is correct. Now, I want to skip, oh, let's not skip it anyway, because I wanted to skip this once where it has the two values and only use the one where there is only one value. So here, let's use C, let's look at C. The T value associated with the lower tail while we're still at the same point. Uh, so we're still also looking for the lower tail. Let's go look for T of 0, 0,025. We could go find it. So now 0, 0,025 and the degrees of freedom. So you need to go to the table. T of 0, 0,025 is the next door, which is that one. It's 2,052. 
2,052. And they say in the lower tail, this is the lower tail, which is 2, will be minus 2,052. So it is a minus 2,052. If they would have said in the upper, we know that for any distribution, here it's zero. So this side will be positive and the side, the left side will be negative. The right side will be positive. So <clears throat> that is correct. So now let's move to the one where they've got the two values, but they also give us a 95% confidence level. So at 95%, they say, if 95% of the area under the distribution is between that and that, what they're asking, because with the other one, we were looking at only the small portion side. So what they're saying is, can you find out if, let's use the same, the same diagram that I have here. They say if, if we have this critical value, what does this area represent? Is it a 95% confidence? So we'll have the minus critical value there and the positive critical value. Does it give you a 95%? So what we need to do is we need to go find our alpha. Alpha for 95 is 0 0.05. So alpha divided by 2 is... We did calculate it. What did we zero find? Zero two five. We found that it was zero comma zero two five. So did we find what is the critical value if we use this to go find? The critical value is minus two comma zero five two on this side and two comma zero five two on the other side. So therefore, this is the incorrect one. Just to prove to you, because don't take my weight for it and say, oh, but it's because you just want to give us that answer. Let's look at number D and number E and see if that area is the same. So I'm just going to remove all these values that we have. The concept still works the same. So what we need at 90%, what is alpha? Alpha at 90% is? 0 0,1. 0 0,1. Alpha divided by 2? It's 0 0,05. It's 0 0,05. So now we need to take our alpha of 0, 0,05 and 27 and go find the, the, the critical value. 0 0,05 and 27. Where is 0 0,05? 1,703. 1,703. So this side will be minus 1,703. And this side will be positive 1,703. Do we have that on the answer? Yes, definitely we do. Let's look at 80%. You do the same. At 80%, 80% is 0 0.20. So what is 0, 0,20 divided by 2? 0, 0,10. 0, 0,10. So now take 0, 0,10 and go find the probability. So where is 0, 0,10 is the first column, which is 1,314. So therefore it means for that one, it's minus 1,314, and this side it will be positive 1,314. Is it the same? Yes, it is. <clears throat> and that's how you will find the correct answer, of which it's the incorrect answer. Yes. Okay. 
a simple random sample of 46 from a normal population results in a sample mean of 300 and a sample standard deviation of 50. Construct a 90% confidence interval for the population mean. Choose the correct answer. So we are given our N of 46. We are given the sample mean of 300. What else are we given? Population or sample standard deviation? Sample standard deviation. Sample standard deviation. And on this one, it's easy to recognize because they did say a sample standard deviation. On the other one, they didn't say, but you need to be able to read the question in order to identify whether this is the sample or the population. The sample standard deviation of 50, and they're asking you to construct a 90% confidence interval, which means your alpha will be equals to 0, 0,10. So you need to go find Z alpha divided by 2, which is Z of 0, 0,10 divided by 2, Z of 0, 0,05. Uh, and that is, is the one and one optional X Z value that we use with three decimals. So 0, 0,05. Zero comma, what are we looking for? Sorry, my bad. Zero comma zero five. Zero comma zero five, which is one comma. It is the only one way it uses two values. Oh, two, yeah, three values. One comma six four five. For ninety percent, you need to know that. Remember. There is some way on the notes when you go write the exam, you must have some um, key things next to you that will assist you with ease of answering some of the questions. Like the Z, the critical values, Z alphas, you need to have a table that I think we did discuss this at some point. Z of alpha, because even when you answer questions on Hypothesis testing, you need to know uh, the Z, only for the Z. It works only for the Z. For the T distribution, it will not work because T distribution depends on your level, your degrees of freedom. But for the Z, you can create and say for 90% confidence interval, this will be 1,645. And you can say for a 95, this is 1,96. But you also need to know for the alpha when it is not divide, divided by two, uh, what will it be? OK, but that is for another day, this discussion. So now construct a confidence interval. So and you should have told me that this is very wrong. Uh, can I ask something? Mm. For the sample, if a sample standard deviation is given, isn't it unknown? And we're supposed to use the T, T table. And that is what I was saying. Given. Yes, and that's why I'm saying you should be picking up this, that this is wrong. You see, that's why I'm deleting everything that we just did now. Because you need to look at the samples standard deviation. If it is unknown, we use a t-test. We don't use a z. We use t, alpha divided by 2, and the degrees of freedom. Because the population standard deviation is unknown. So our alpha still stays T of 0, 0,05. And the degrees of freedom will be our N is 46. 45. So it will be 45. So you need to go and find your 
degree alpha divide by two, and the degrees of freedom and S divide by the square root of N. You need to go find the critical value on the table, on the T table. We're looking for 45, which is the last one. And it's 1, 6, 7, 9. And 0, 0, 5. 1, 6, 7, 9. Your mean is 300. Plus or minus 50 divided by the square root of n, which is 46. And for the minus, it's 287,622. 287,622. Yes. Mm -hmm. Three one two point three seven 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 five. Three seven. There's a three comma one two three. Yeah, triple seven five. Okay. So the answer is in two decimal. We can just round it off to two decimal. So that will be two, and that will be eight. Three eight. So let's see, 287, 287, so it's number C. Consider the following application exercise from the previous assignment most of the school reported a decline in the number of absences following the education department's learner transport program and school nutrition program in a sample of 150 schools from joe gabi i don't know if i'm pronouncing it right district municipality 114 schools reported the decline in the number of learners absent. Construct a 90% confidence interval estimate of a population proportion of schools that reported that a decline in the number of learners and chose and choose the correct answer from the list of options. What confidence interval are we looking at here? for proportions and if it's proportions then we're going to be doing the sample proportion plus or minus the critical value times the standard error which is sample proportion one minus sample proportion divide by n so what are we given n of 150 we're given x of 114 and we can find p because p is x over n which is 114 over 150 what is that 0, 0,76 0, 0,76 and we need to find the critical value of 90 percent which is z of 0, 0,10 divided by 2, which is z of 0, 0,05, and we did discuss this, which is 1,645. Substitute into the formula our p 0, 0,76 plus or minus our critical value of 1,645 times the standard error, which is 0, 0,76 times 1 minus 0, 0,76 divided by our n of 
for the minus it's zero comma seven zero two six. On the upper or lower? On the lower side? On the lower, it's 0, 0,703 when I round it off. Let's keep it on decimals. It's 0, 0,7026. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll just keep some of them. And then on this, on the plus side? It's 0, 0,81736. Seven, three, six. six. We can then run it off to three decimals when we look at the options. Okay, zero comma seven. So that is not. That is not. That is not zero comma seven. But it's zero comma seven three because when we round off that, it's going to be three, and when we round off seven, it's going to be seven. So the answer is option one. Others, are you following? Yes, ma'am. Or are you lost? You must talk so that then when we leave the session, you're not confused or what is happening. Okay, so I think that concludes chapter eight. Oh, okay. So now we move into the hypothesis testing. With hypothesis testing, with hypothesis testing also, you need to remember whether it's hypothesis testing for the mean or for the proportion. And if it's for the mean also, is the population standard deviation known? Or is the population standard deviation unknown? Unknown. You need to also remember all that. Because when it is known, we use Z. When it's unknown, we use T. When is the proportion we always use? The Z. The other thing that you also need to remember are the hypothesis testing steps. You need to remember to state your null hypothesis and your alternative hypothesis. I'm going to do like that. So we know that with a null hypothesis, there is always an equality sign, whether it's less than or equal or greater than or equal, but there is always an equality sign. With the alternative, which is your most important hypothesis testing uh, statement, there is no inequality. So it will say either less than or, or it's going to say greater than, or it will say it's not equal. And both of them, whether it's less than or greater than, or whether it's not both, all of them, they give you a sense in terms of the type of a test you're doing. So this will be a one tail a one tail test, and this is a two tail test. It's very important to know the difference because we also need to make a decision at the end, and that is very important. Step number two, you need to be able to state what you are given in relation to N, in relation to alpha, and in relation to other values. Then step number three, you need to be able to state the test that you are doing, whether you're doing a T test or a Z test based on the information given from previous. Step number four, you need to be able to find the critical value, critical value, and based also in terms of whether you're using a Z or a T, how do you find your critical value? 
and also based on your null hypo your alternative hypothesis whether you're going to find your z alpha or alpha over 2 or your t alpha or alpha over 2 for a two tail for a one tail we just use z for a two tail we divide the z by 2 step number 5 you need to be able to calculate calculate the test statistic, whether it's a Z-stat or it is a T-test. Step number six, you need to be able to make a decision. And whether you're making a decision based on a two-tail test or making a decision based on a one-tail a one tail test. So this one will be if your hypothesis testing, uh, your, null hyp your alternative hypothesis says it's less, and this is when it says it's greater than, when it's greater than, and this is when it says it's not. So you need to be able to make use of that. The same way as this will, the T for that will be for the not equal and equal, and this one is when you be not equal. So you need to know all those steps of a hypothesis testing. What else do you need to know? Making a decision, especially for the Z, uh, only for the Z, either for the proportion or the T test, you can make, there are two scenarios. Scenario one is what I explained there, using the critical value and the Z state or the the critical value and the Z state is the, the one that we used when we were explaining the steps. Scenario two is using a P value and your level of significance and alpha, P value and alpha. The decision on this one says, if the p value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. That is the rule. Whereas with the critical value, it says once you have defined your critical value, so if it's a two tail test, once you have defined your region of rejection, whether on the upper and the lower, you make a decision. If it falls in the rejection area, you reject. If it falls in the rejection area, you reject. Otherwise, you do not reject. With the p-value, the decision says, if the p-value is less than your alpha, you reject. How do you find the p-value? Also, depending on whether you're doing a two-tail test or a one-tail test. So finding the p-value, if it's a two-tail test, the value you find on the table, you're going to multiply by two, but only if the value is on the negative side. If your Z value is negative, if your Z value is negative, the value you find on the table will be two times the value you find on the table. Your p value will be, and let's put it this way. Let's put it this way. Let's rewrite it this way so that you can understand. So if your z value is equals to negative, then the p value will be equals to two times the table, the table value. That is for a two-tail test when your alternative says not equal. If your Z value is positive, then your P value will be two times one minus the table value. If it's for greater than or equal, the same thing will happen. So for 
a less than so if your z uh your alternative sorry i must use the alternative if your alternative was greater than then you say the p value is equals to one minus oh sorry equals to one minus the table value or something like that when it's less than it's equals to the table value so your p value will be equals to the t the table value for the less than for the greater than one minus the value we find on the table because on the table it will be showing you the positive one will show you the value the greater than value as well For when z is positive when z is negative then the p value is the value you see on the table okay so i don't think we will finish everything in one day we might carry on on this on on wednesday and then we'll do the uh, assignment two as well so uh we are on number eight and i think there are 13 questions so we might not finish all of them in a sample of 36 the sample mean is 83 it is also known that the population standard deviation is 16. you are required to use the information to test the following hypothesis given that the null hypothesis is equals to 80 and the alternative is greater than 80. so we're doing a one tail test so it means there is one region of rejection the critical value we're going to find it by using alpha and so forth they have given us the population standard deviation so it means we're going to do the Z hypothesis test. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? So we're looking for the incorrect statement. The test statistic is 1,286. So it means with the test statistic, they want you to calculate Z is equals to, because this is Z stat, is equals to the sample mean minus the population mean which we will find on the hypothesis testing divided by the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n which is the standard error so substitute the values onto the formula so our sample mean is 83 our population mean is given in the hypothesis is 80 divided by standard deviation 16 divided by the square root of n which is 36 what do you get 1 comma 125 1 comma 1 And therefore, it means we already have our incorrect statement. Okay, anyway, let's assume that that was not the incorrect one. The p value, we need to take 1,23. So we need to go take z of. 1 comma 1 2 3 because we need to round it off to two decimal and that is we go to there 1 comma 1 3 2 3 which is 0 0.8 
seven, which our p value will be given by one. Remember, I said p value will be given by one minus the table value. One minus zero comma eight. What I forgot now. Zero comma eight seven zero eight eight seven. And do you get the same answer? Might be that I used in the wrong table than the one that they used, but that should give you one minus point eight seven zero eight. It doesn't give me that. I have one comma What, 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 what? How did they get that? Because this is one comma one, even if I say one comma one two, I still will not get the same answer as what they have there. So then it means we have two answers that are incorrect. One comma one. Let me just double check something here. I think that is a typing error on the answer or something i don't know but if the answer if the z value is what did they get they get a and a is the right one so the p value one comma three why do they have one comma three one minus eight seven it should be one comma two nine two. What do you get? Even if I use the other ones, I'm not going to get that option that they gave. I think zero comma one two nine two is the closest to the answer the yeah but i think they used the they they went to the table and chose the wrong like instead of choosing eight seven zero eight they chose the if you say one minus point eight nine zero seven oh but also it will not even give you what they have there Because I'm trying to think, how did they even get there to that value? Um, because you won't even find the opposite one three on the opposite. If you go to the negative three, three o o three, three o o six o seven. Those are the only three three o values you will get, which are not even but the one that we have, we get the answer for it. So that's what I'm wondering how, I'm, I think they, I don't know. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong one, one three. So their answer is 1303, 
13. Do you see any 1303 here? Because these are the 13th. And that there is no 1303. Unless on the five decimal table or somewhere. Since we have multiple tables, oh gosh. Let's see. Does it have the table to this one? It's not this one. I need to get that other one. Which has the, which one did we, we constantly use? This one doesn't have. I want the table with five decimals. Uh, will I ever find one like that? Let me see. This one has four decimals as well. Oh, the one with three decimals, maybe. Okay, anyway, I'm not going to find an answer for, for that one because then then it means this one also is not right. At 10%, why do I have one comma? Eight seven zero oh, eight, which is zero comma one two nine two. I'm gonna assume that they rounded off some way. That's how they got because if I round it off to two decimal, we'll get the same answer. But anyway, at ten percent level of significance, the rule is to reject the null hypothesis. So now we can go and find at ten percent level of significance means. Because we're doing a one tail, we need to go find Z of 0, 0, 0, 0,0, 0,10. Uh, Z of 10%. So 10% is 1,10. Which is 1,28. 1,28. So if that is the case, our critical value is 1,28, then it means we need to go and see if we can reject the null hypothesis at this because this is 1,28. That's the decision. We're doing a greater than. So the region of rejection is on the positive side and it is 1,28. We take our Z test and we we locate where it is. It is in there. Wait, 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 wait. So here they say at 10% significance level, the rule is to reject the null hypothesis if the test statistic is greater than or equals to 1,8285. So we're not using the 125. We must use the test statistic that they gave us, which is 1,285. So where does it fall? No, man. That is our critical value. What is our critical value? Why do I have 128? Because our critical value was 128. That's what we found. The Z value of 128 falls in the rejection area. So therefore we're going to reject the null hypothesis because it falls in the rejection area. So question number C is also correct. So that is correct. 
we reject the null hypothesis if the test statistic is equal to or greater than 128 because we did find our critical value to be 1,28. At 10% level of significance, the null hypothesis is not rejected. If we base the answer on our correct test statistic, it will fall in the do not reject area, therefore it also correct. And this is a an upper tail area Z test, which is also Correct. The only correct that is the only answer that is not correct is option A. I'm still worried about the small errors that are creeping up on most of the questions. Okay, so suppose the calculated test statistic is a one sided tail test and the test statistic we found that it's minus 2,74. Suppose further that the population standard deviation is known. So if that is the case, then this was a Z test. Uh, and it was a Z test of less than because we were doing the hypothesis of a lower tail minus 2.74. All what they want you to do is go find the p-value. So go to the Z table and find the p-value of minus 2.74. So we go to minus, let's remove all the ink. Minus 2 point, we're looking for minus 2.74 minus 2.74 so 2.7 and a 4 0 comma 0 0 3 1 0 comma 0 0 3 1 happiness yes Okay, sorry. Consider a two-sided test with 5% level of significance and a degree of freedom. So now, yeah, they say a two-sided test, so it means it's not equal with a 5% level of significance, which is our alpha, and the degrees of freedom, so our alpha of 0, 0,05, and the degrees of freedom of 25. If the population standard deviation is unknown, therefore it means we're going to be looking for the T critical value, which will be alpha divided by two because it's a two-sided test. You need to be very careful as well. Read the question carefully. Alpha divided by two and the degrees of freedom. Our alpha divided by two, which is 0, 0,05 divided by two and the degrees of freedom of 25, which is T of 0, 0,025 and 25. So we need to go to the T table and look for 0, 0,025 0, and the degrees of freedom of 25. And your critical value is? Your critical value is 2,060. So your critical value should be number one, 2, am I getting it right? 2,06. It's 2,06. Happiness. So you need to read the, especially for these two questions. So because this one said a one-sided test and this one says a two-sided test. So you need to know that for a Z, for a, not for a Z, for a one-sided test, we not dividing or multiplying the p-value or dividing or anything like that. And we use the Z test because they told us that the population standard deviation is known on this side. 
because they say the population standard deviation is unknown and we're doing a two-tailed test, we need to be able, when we find the critical value, to divide alpha by two and use the t-table based on the information given. Okay. Number 11. Various literacy groups recommended a reading speed of 82 words per minute. A grade one teacher is convinced that the average reading speed for his class is less than the recommended speed. In a sample of 32, our N, the average speed in reading, which is the mean, is 77. And the standard deviation is 50, 15. So you must be very careful. In a sample, we've got a mean of 77 and the standard deviation with the standard deviation of 15. So what are we given? We are given the sample standard deviation because it's from the same sentence. It's the standard deviation that is given there is your sample standard deviation. You are required to test the hypothesis at 5% level of significance. So now, what they gave you here are the rejection areas or the rejection regions. So you should have already done all step one up until step five. So to do that, it means you first need to calculate your step uh, let's find the critical value first. Do critical value of alpha, remember, less than. That's the first other thing that you need to also remember. Less than is one-sided. So you're doing a one-tail, a one-tail test. So if you want to take shortcuts and not do the hypothesis test and all that, you need to be able to identify key things that are given to you in the question. So we're doing a one-tail test, alpha and the degrees of freedom. They told you what alpha is, is 0, t 0, 0,05. And the degrees of freedom, they told you that they are 32. So the degrees of freedom will be 32 minus 1. So you go find the critical value on the table. Uh, 31 and 0, 0,05. 31 and 0, 0,05 and 31. 31, it's 1, 696. 1, 696. That is your critical value. Now, we know what the region of rejection is at because it says it's less than. So this side minus 1, 696. That's where the region of rejection is at. But that is not the end. We need to go find the test statistic, the Z stat, by calculating the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of N, which our sample mean is 77 minus our population mean is always given in the question, but now because we don't have the standard the Hypothesis testing, it's 82. It was given in the statement. It's 82. Divide by the standard error of 15. Divide by the square root of 32. What is your Z? Did you calculate it? What do you get? Minus, min, minus 1, 8, 8, 5, 6. Eight, let's keep it to two decimals. 8, 8. So minus 1, 8, 9. Ne? Yes. To two decimals. <clears throat> so you must also remember 
on the number line, if this is zero, this is one, this is two. So a bigger number on the negative side refers to a smaller a smaller value. So since our critical value is 1,69, our test statistics is 1,6. So it falls in the rejection area. Ne? Our test statistics falls in the rejection area because our test statistics is 1,8 when our critical value is 1,6. So it will fall in the rejection area. So now it means we're rejecting the null hypothesis. So now let's look at all the statements and see which one is. Choose the correct statement. So we're choosing the correct statement. A says we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the grade one reading speed is less than 82. Remember your null hypothesis would have been the mean is equals to 82. The alternative would have said the mean is equals to it's less than 82. So we're saying we're rejecting this statement. Therefore, we're saying this one is true. So we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the grade one average speed is less than 82 words per minute. That is the correct way or the correct one. So but let's read the others. We do not reject. We know that we are rejecting. So that one won't be correct. There is not enough information provided to conclude, but there is enough information because they have given us everything we need to do the hypothesis testing. We reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the grade one reading speed is not significantly different, but we know that we are rejecting and we know that it is different because we are accepting our alternative of less than. So the second part of that statement makes it not correct because we know that there is a less than uh, recommended speed. We do not reject that statement is incorrect because we are rejecting the null hypothesis. The only statement here is A. Ah, it's A. Okay. In the sample of 100, the sample proportion, so now we're looking at the hypothesis of proportion. The sample proportion is 32. Consider the following hypothesis. Calculate the p-value. So in order for you to calculate the p-value, you should calculate the z-value. So the z is p minus, or your z-stat is p minus, the population proportion divided by the population proportion one minus the population proportion divided by n. So we have 0 0.32 minus 0 0.4 divided by the square root of 0 0.4 times one minus 0 0.4 divided by 100. And what do you get? Minus 1,63. Minus 1,63. Now, the other thing you need to also go back and look at is the hypothesis testing. Uh, here there is a typing error. This should be an alternative hypothesis. <clears throat> So the hypothesis test says we're doing a one tail test. So it means the value we find on the table, if we're doing also a one tail on the lower boundary, which is in the negative side, and we know that the table, the Z table contains the, legs, the probability of a less than. So we just go to the Z table and look for minus uh, 1.63. Z minus 1.6. 
three, which is zero comma zero five one six, zero comma zero one five six. And that's how you will find the p value. Oh, I thought we were not going to finish. We are done. Uh, okay. So this one has more answers. So we need to scroll to the bottom. Most of the school reported a decline in the number of absences in school program. Wara wara. A sample of 200 schools from Amatole District, 85% reported a decline in the number of absent learners. The manager is adamant that the true population of the school was reported in the number of absent is different from 78 previously. Formulate a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis and conduct the test for true population at 5% level of significance. Okay, so state, statement number one. State null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. So based on the information, we need to also be very careful about the, the two values. So the Amatole district is your sample because it's one of the district from, from the, the, the Department of Education's districts. It's only one out of many. So the population proportion, which they told you there, they say it is 78. So you need to know that for all the hypothesis testing, we always use the population proportion, which your null hypothesis will state that the population proportion is equals to 78%. And the alternative will state what they are saying. They say, it shows that there is a, uh, a, a reported a decline in the number, but that doesn't mean that it's different because they say they say it um it uh, you need to test the hypothesis, but they didn't tell you that uh, the deadline is in relation. They know that there is a deadline, but they are not saying that that is less than or some is less than the municipality uh, absenteeism is less than or no the the, the the amatole district is less than the population one so they're not saying that so it means here we're talking about the not equal situation so this will be the probability that it is not equals to 78%, which will mean that we're doing a two-tailed test. The number two, we need to find the critical value. Let me just double check if all that. No, let's not find the critical value. Let's calculate the Z test so that we can calculate, uh, answer the question, which is P minus the proportion divided by the square root of Population proportion minus the population proportion divided by n, and the sample proportion is 85, 0, 0,85, 0, 0,78 minus 0,78 divided by the 0,78 times 1 minus 0,78 divided by our n. 
calculate that so that then we can go and find the p-value as well and then we can answer the question. 2,39. 2,39. So because we're doing a two tail and the answer is positive, we need to go to the positive table. 2,39, we go find 2,3 and 9 is the last column, which is that. So we need to say 1 minus this value of 0, 0,9916. What do you get? Zero point zero zero eight four. So we find zero point zero zero eight four, multiply that by two. Zero comma zero one six eight. Two comma zero comma zero zero eight four. I just want to write it here. Zero comma zero zero. Eight four and you find the p value is zero comma zero one six eight. Zero comma zero one six eight. That is our p value, and we can make a decision based on the p value or the critical value. It doesn't really matter which one we use. We know the decision says if the p value is less than the critical value. Since we didn't go and find the critical value, we can use the p value. If the p value is less than Alpha, we reject H H naught. So now our p value is zero comma zero one six eight. And our alpha, they did give us the alpha. They said it's at five percent level of significance. So our alpha is zero comma zero five. So our p value is less. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis. So now let's answer the question. The alternative hypothesis is that the, the alternative state that the population proportion is not equals to 78. That's what we stated, not equal. <clears throat> and we can conclude that the population the proportion of school that reported the decline of absence is significantly different from 0, 0,08. Oh, uh, we can conclude that the population proportion that reported the decline on the number is significantly different. So because we're rejecting the null hypothesis, therefore we say it, they are different because we're saying they are not equal. Because if they were equal, we wouldn't be declining the or rejecting the null hypothesis. So therefore, this statement is also correct. So both of them are correct. Uh, the null hypothesis is rejected. We rejected the null hypothesis based on the statement that we made. That's true. Then the other two, <clears throat> the test statistic is 2,39. Did you round off correctly? Because they it says it's 2,38. What did you get? Yes, it, the answer was 2,389. So when we rounded off, it's 2,39. Okay, so 2,389. So you need to make sure that you round off correctly. So that is correct as well. The p-value is 0, 0,84. The p-value is 0, 0,0168. It's not 0, 0,084. So that is the incorrect one. So because of a two-tailed test, that's why the p-value will be, because the p-value, let's go back to when we were discussing this, when we find the p-value for a not equal, we multiply the value we find on the table from, uh, we multiply it by two. And if it's positive, we say one minus the value we find on the table. If it's negative, the value we find on the table, we multiply that by two. And that's what we 
we did on this. And I guess we're right on time. Every day we finish on time. And that concludes our two hours of that. Any question? Comment? Mm -mm. Next. If there are no questions, comments, or anything, then enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks, Lizzie. Thank you. Bye. To you. Bye. I will see you Bye. on Wednesday when we do assignment five, uh, which is based on study unit 10 and 11, which is chi squared and regression. And I think because those ones we did them last it stood it should still be in your mind as well and then we will discuss how we proceed in terms of the exam preparations because i know that now some people have already started writing the exams so we need to not overwhelm you with a whole lot of information maybe we can now decide to have only one session per week instead of two to accommodate those who are writing the exams, who already started writing the exams. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you. See you Wednesday. Thank bye. You. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.